Okay, after spending some time in complete darkness, let's move on to the outdoor to see how the screen will perform under the bright sunlight. I would like to compare the reading experience on these different medium on color yin screen, on the traditional black and white yin screen, and also on a hot cover. Let's check out the Nova Air C in the middle first. And I've turned off the backlight now, and you can see the color is still very rich, very vivid. Reading under bright sunlight seems to be the ideal scenario for these Yi Ink screen to perform in Excel. For you don't have to push the black light level to the maximum as you would with a traditional display on your mobile phones, which will cause a straining to the eye. It is a very enjoyable reading experience with the black light off on the Nova Air C. Even with the black light off, the color is very rich, the image uh, stunningly reproduced it, the text are very chipsy. But what about turning on the black lights under these situations? I can now try to turn, push the both warm and cold black lights to the maximum, and you can see, uh, you, you can't notice uh, any difference, I guess. So turning on the black lights under the bright sunlight is quite unnecessary to me. So let's check out the Nova Free Color on the left. You can see the screen performs more or less the same as on the Nova Air C. Um, as I'm not expecting a significant improvement, significant difference uh, between these uh, display. The color reproduction on this Nova Free Color is already very good, even compared to the Nova Air C. You can see the reddish sunset on the background. If the color reproduction is not accurate, is not good enough, it's going to be a big patch of red. But you can see the different shade of red here is quite accurately reproduced it, and the micro contrast between different shades of red is very good. Let's compare the Nova Air C with a traditional black and white device. On the left is the Cobra Library 2, which has one of the whitest and also the best Contra screen on the market. You can easily see the screen on the Cobra Library 2 is a lot whiter than the Nova Air C. The greatest background on the Nova Air C is like reading on a paperback, while the Cobra Library 2 is like reading books printed on high gloss paper. My choice here is if I'm to read uh, some text-only documents, like a novel, I would pick the Cobra Library 2. If I'm going to read a color magazine, I would definitely fall back to the Nova Air C. Let's see the comparison between the physical copy and the Nova Air C. This hardcover book is printed on high white paper, and that's why it's reflecting a lot of light and a little bit too bright to read on. Under this scenario, I will prefer reading on the Nova Air C instead, which is a little bit easier for my eye. Now let's move back to indoor and check out the reading experience with the factory default reading app. All boxes device come with the new reader, which is one of the uh, most feature-rich uh, reading app on the market. Let me open a huge PDF file which is close to 300 megabytes uh, to show you the reading experience on the factory default new reader. This PDF has a lot of images, a lot of pictures, and also in multiple column text layout. Uh, rendering such a huge PDF file demands a lot of processing power. Yes, the page turning here is instantaneous that you don't have to wait too long for a page to turn. Sometimes I find the text are too, a little bit too small for me, I would use the pinch and zoom features. Let's see how would it perform. You can see the zoom in is slimness and very smooth. You don't have to wait too long to zoom into a particular text column to read it. Overall, I'm very happy with the reading experience of uh, PDF files on these Nova Air C. Even if the PDF has a lot of uh, graphics, a lot of pictures, it still uh, performs very smoothly. Every time when I'm deciding on whether I should buy an e-reader, there's one crucial question that I would ask myself. It is about the screen size. Whether the screen is big enough, good enough for my general usage? You may say the answer is easy. Definitely, the bigger the better. 
The big reader like the Max Lumia series with an A4 size screen may be ideal, a perfect solution to read at home. For my general usage, I usually spend a large chunk of time with these reader while I'm commuting instead of at home. Porting a gigantic A4 size e-reader here and there on the road may not be the best mobile solutions. I read a lot of magazines so I would like to show you how a magazine will look like on a 7.8 inches e-reader. I pick a National Geographic here because it's very easy for you to get one copy of it uh, anywhere in the world so you can have a very concrete idea. A 7.8 screen is about 60% of the original size. Now I will show you how the text inside would look like in the portrait mode. Uh, the text is definitely smaller, way smaller, and but it's still clear, it's still readable, but barely. Um, I will get a little bit tired after reading about 20 pages of these text size. There's one little treat that you can use to improve the readability of these tiny texts is by pushing the dark color enhancement to a higher level. That will push the contrast level higher and the dark color darker and make it easier to read on a white background. If this is still not easy enough for you to read, there's one further treat that you can use to make it uh, even more uh, readable is by shifting the screen to the landscape mode. By rotating the screen to a landscape mode and change the page turning mode to continuous, uh, the page will zoom to the width of the page, so the text will be even larger than the original print. I find it to be the easiest and the most enjoyable way to read a magazine with a 7.8 inches screen. Yes, you will have to turn the page a little bit more often, but the bigger text would be way more easier to read. In my opinion, you can read documents up to A4 size on a 7.8 inches screen uh, in landscape mode. An A4 size document is the most commonly found format in my part of the world. So I do think 7.8 inches is the sweet spot of uh, e-reader. These size would allow me to read most of the documents that I would encounter. Or there's no wonder that so many 7.8 inches e-reader on the market from Kobo, from Kindle, and from Box. So if you are considering getting your first e-reader, 7.8 inches would be a in perfect entry point. Let's talk about some other features of these uh, Nova Air C. I'm glad that Box hasn't tried to cut corners on the uh, Nova Air C by removing some very important feature. We have a pair of decent and loudspeaker and a microphone at the bottom of the Nova Air C, and this opens up some very interesting alternative use of it. For example, now I'm trying to learn Spanish on this e reader, I will use the Dolingo apps. The speakers are very loud and clear and very useful in such a kind of situations. I can also interact with the app via the microphone and reading out the Spanish phrase in the app and it will evaluate my pronunciation and reading of it. El hotel tiene una puerta grande. Besides learning a foreign language on this reader, I can also use this as a quick note transcriber. Let me show you how to do it here. After you have enabled the Google Framework and installed the Google Keyboard, you can use the built-in voice typing function. You can start voice typing by pressing the little microphone icon on the upper right corner of the keyboard. Let's try. Hey, this review is great. Let's subscribe. For sure, voice typing is far from perfect. I would be very happy if I can get about 70% accuracy out of it. It would have saved me a lot of time already in post-processing those uh, transcribed notes if I can have a 70% accuracy. When using these e-readers, sometimes my friends would ask, Hey, if you can play any video on this reader. And I would say you can definitely play video on this reader, but it won't be a very enjoyable experience. 
Due to the refresh wave threshold on this in-ink screen, the video won't be played so bloodily smooth as on those conventional displayed on your mobile devices. But I surely won't mind consuming some informative short video footage or infographics on it. Let's see how does it look like to play video on it. Just now I played a video in the best quality normal mode, but if you really want to have a smoother experience, you can change the refresh mode to the A2 mode. The ghosting will be more noticeable, but it will be much smoother. You will notice that the captions and the picture are going on way less choppy, much much smoother than before. Oh, but you can also notice that the ghosting is getting more and more noticeable. You are sacrificing some video quality for the enhanced reflashes way here. Many people would ask if most of the apps are compatible with these Android Ink Reader. I've been using these Android Ink Reader for nearly 5 years now, and compatibility of apps is getting much better than before. I would say over 90% of the apps that I would use on my phone can be used on these Android Ink tablets without any problem. Only the user experience of those apps which has a lot of animation would be affected. You can still use it, but just not as smooth. In my daily usage, I would use the Telegram app to stay in touch with my friends. I can read manga on it easily and also I can read all the subscribed newspaper via the subscribed apps on it without any problems. Unless you use your Android phone mainly for the consumption of multimedia contents, I won't see too big a problem for you to migrate your Android experience onto such a uh, Android ink tablet. So it's a good time for my conclusion. To whom I would recommend this uh, Box Nova Air C2 and to whom I would not recommend it to. If you read a lot on your mobile devices and you consider buying your first uh, Android e Ink reader, Nova Air C is a very good option, especially if you are looking for a color e Ink tablet. And if you use a lot of self-learning apps like the Dolengo I've showed you and I'm also trying to learn to play guitar using the musician apps, then Nova Air C should be in your consideration as it has a pair of very decent speaker and a very sensitive microphone. Also, if you like me, have to read before you sleep, or this Nova Air C is recommended to you too. But if you have the previous generations of box color ink reader, the Nova Free Color, unless you have a very strong insistence on having physical page turning buttons like me, I wouldn't recommend you upgrade from a Nova Free Color as the improvement isn't really that noticeable. It just doesn't warrant the extra money that you have to spend. If you're fancying, consuming, enjoying a lot of multimedia contents on your Android tablet, this Nova Air C is just not your cup of tea. And if you're a heavy gamer or a professional esports player, this Nova Air C is just not for you too. It just won't be enjoyable to play games on it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review and my advice has been helpful to you to make up your mind on whether getting this e-ink tablet. Please subscribe if you like this review, thank you.